You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products like Venom heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we were uh, hoping for some news, some real big news, and we finally got it. Came a day late, and it was not what we were hoping for as far as a big trade. Aaron Rodgers is, um, and the news is still coming in, and I'm getting some pretty shocking news here as it comes in, but um, Aaron Rodgers seems like he will be out on Sunday. He has, um, I had first saw tested positive for COVID. I just saw a few seconds ago Ian Rappaport saying that Aaron Rodgers is unvaccinated, and that is the reason that he is being um, held out. There's some weird things about him saying he was immunized and people mistook that to mean uh, vaccinated, but technically immunized is not vaccinated. I'm not making that as a statement. I'm just saying that's the justification that I'm seeing. I don't know what the difference would be. Um, And I don't, I guess I don't really care. Uh, (laughs) Um. So I'm I'm assuming this is not a positive test. It's a close contact. And I don't even, I don't know exactly what that means. Um, And I don't even know that he wasn't tested positive. Again, I keep getting different things every five seconds from Twitter. I'm looking at it as I'm talking to you. A couple different thoughts on that. The first one is I'm I'm still waiting to see how Twitter and the fan base is going to react to this. Um, There's so many different factions. There's the... Um, you know, people that are not super big fans of Rogers that are very, very COVID conscientious, if that's the right word, who are probably going to really, really, really dislike Aaron Rodgers. Um, you've got people that, um, love Rogers and are very COVID conscientious. And I'm curious to know how they're going to react to this news that he's not playing because he made the decision to not get vaccinated. Um, that's kind of beside the point, but I am very curious to see how this impacts the fan base and what the general thought is, because I mean, it, it does matter. A lot of what this season and off season and everything has come down to has been these different factions. Um, sorry, I'm just reading tweets here. Yeah. So it says, uh, Garofolo points out on NFL network that Rogers said he was immunized this summer. Doesn't necessarily mean vaccinated. Um, so does this mean he tested positive for the second time? You could infer that by him saying he was immunized. Oh, so maybe they're saying that he was, he had already gotten COVID, and that's his justification for immunization, um, and he has maybe gotten it now a second time. I don't know. Anyways, the point is, I, I do think it matters. I, I think it matters um, for, for, I mean, for a lot of reasons. It's not just what the fans think. It's, it's what the teammates think. It's what the locker room and the coaches think. It's what the GM thinks. Not to say that they would cut him or, or move on from him next year because he didn't get the COVID vaccine or anything. I mean, who knows? Um, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying it, it, I, I'm going to be interested in watching the developments of this and how this unravels and how this all unfolds with the fan base, with the team, with everything else. It's It's obviously very, very big news, not just because he's not playing, but the fact that one of the most popular figures in football, um, obviously the biggest figure on this team and, and the source of a lot of drama already, uh, is now apparently unvaccinated. But anyways, let's let's move on from that. We'll that'll all unfold as uh, as we move on here. Um, obviously, this is pretty devastating news. Uh, the assumption was the Packers were going to be favorites, and I assume that that line would continue to move in our favor. I'm sure that's going to move heavily back in the Chiefs' favor, and and I think justifiably. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Number one, this team has done an unbelievable job of overcoming some serious adversity. And when I mean serious adversity, I literally mean – This team is stacked with some of the best players in the entire NFL. Number one left tackle in football. 
number one wide receiver in football, number one cornerback in football, one of the top pass rushers in football. We lost all of them. We lost Corey Lindsley, who was the number one center. I know for different reasons, but that's still adversity. To lose the best center in football, the best tackle in football, the best corner in football, the best wide receiver in football, and we won every game but one. The only real massive adversity that we have not faced so far is losing the MVP of the league last year. And so to completely count out this team, I think, is is premature. It's obviously bigger. Losing Rodgers is bigger than um, losing Devontae. It's bigger than losing even Bakhtiari or Jair. But, but again, those are massive. And I had even said there, there's, you know, if we had, if <sighs> before Jair went out, I made the comment that losing Jair would be the second biggest loss minus Aaron Rodgers. And it would be devastating to this team. We've not lost a game since he's been out. And it's not because he's not great. It's not because he was overrated. Our corners have struggled a little bit. It's just because this team has risen above and overcome. Secondarily, there is the issue of the Chiefs just being a really bad football team right now. The defense is not necessarily impacted by this. Their ability to slow down and stop this Chiefs offense that is stumbling and bumbling and struggling to stop very basic things like too high coverage, which, again, the Packers have too in the past, but the, the Chiefs are going through that. You got Pat Mahomes who's struggling seriously. I, I saw... I forgot who it was. It was a, an ex-quarterback breaking down some different things and just talking about how his mechanics are a mess. And, you know, instead of throwing passes, he's breaking the pocket because he's scared and he doesn't trust his protection. And it's just stuff like that. He's been throwing picks every single week. The guys aren't catching passes. The discipline isn't there. Uh, you, you got, I just played it today, not even yesterday, today on the podcast. If you went back and listened to it, and I would encourage you to do so because it was fun. You have Chiefs YouTubers saying this is not a playoff team right now. The, the, aside from all that, even if you look at it and say, yeah, but without Aaron Rodgers, this team is trash. And we've seen what happens when Aaron Rodgers goes out. Well, we have, we've seen two different versions of Rodgers going out. We've seen what happens when you've got a guy like Matt Flynn in and you have a chance and you've seen what happened when guys like Brett Hundley come in and you can't beat anybody. But there's, there's a couple different things. First of all, we don't know what Jordan Love can do, but beyond that, we're also talking about entirely different teams. This is not necessarily the same structure and the same team that is 100% dependent on Aaron Rodgers anymore as it used to be for many, 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 many years. And I think we still characterize it as such. I don't think that's necessarily the case. We're seeing the team win with the run game. We're seeing the team win many, many times with defense. The defense has been more impressive than the offense. The offensive point production has not been staggeringly high this year at all by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's been largely the defense. Beyond that, the ability of the team to game plan and come up with a way to win with what you have has been great. And just look at last week. We did not win because of Aaron Rodgers last week. Aaron Rodgers was relegated to dump off passes last week against the number one defense in football. So can we have, is it entirely possible that we build a game plan where Jordan Love has to act in a similar fashion as Aaron Rodgers did last week, in which we lean on the run game, which is Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, and a revamped and massively improved offensive line, um, and, and we rely heavily on quick timing passes, dump off screens, et cetera, et cetera. But instead of going against the number one defense in football, we're going against, what, the number 25 defense in football right now that can't tackle, that can't really do much of anything, they can't really cover. They're playing soft zone, which is the exact opposite of what you want to do against teams like the 49ers or the Packers um, who love to attack you at the line of scrimmage. You want to play off, go ahead and do it. I'm not guaranteeing victory, but I am saying that it's silly to assume that the Chiefs are going to steamroll the Packers. They have the ability. Jordan Love has the ability. Jordan Love could execute what Aaron Rodgers did last week. Most quarterbacks can. It wasn't anything super complex. And so what we're going to have to see, and it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be as much of a challenge, maybe a little more, but I don't know if I even believe that, as much of a challenge as last week having no Devontae, no Bakhtiari, no Jair, blah, 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 none of our top three wide receivers against, again, top three offense, number one defense football. That's what we went up against will beat them. Nobody thought we would. Nobody thought we would. This week, 
Instead of Aaron Rodgers, we have Aaron Jones going up against one of the worst defenses in football in an offense that is being characterized as not even a playoff team right now. We're not out of the fight. And by the way, Aaron Rodgers might play. I don't, I don't know exactly what's going on. I'm still waiting to see. Um, it's also probably more likely um, than him playing would be more guys going out. <laughs> I was just about to say before I started recording, if anybody's a close contact that's unvaccinated, they're probably not going to play either. Um, and it turns out that was Rogers' situation. But you've also got, you know, they had the Christmas party. What's up with the Christmas party? What's going on with, you know, we know Kurt uh, Benkert is not playing because he has COVID. Um, if Jordan Love has it, we're in deep trouble. Um, you know, what the heck is on my mirror? What the heck is that? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm in my car recording this, and there's looks like a blade sticking out of my mirror. I don't know if something broke or if somebody's jamming garbage in there, or maybe that's a death threat. I don't know. The Bears fans are really getting tired of me talking about Justin Fields, and they're leaving me death threat warnings all over the place. Um, but anyways, that's that's really all I got. Let's Let's just slow down, take it a step at a time, and if nothing else, we just approach it the same way as the Arizona Cardinals game. This is a great team. This is a team that's going to get Aaron Rodgers and David. We're, we're going to get these guys back, and they're getting better every single week, and they're growing, and all this adversity is just making them stronger. And listen, we get to watch Jordan Love. Maybe he wins, maybe he loses. We get to watch the guy. We get to get him some practice. He may be our quarterback of the future. Let's do what we do as fans. Let's cheer for our team. Let's support our team. Let's support Aaron Rodgers. Let's support Jordan Love. Let's go out and watch a real good football team. And let's watch the Green Bay Packers overcome some more adversity and just destroy the Kansas City Chiefs without Aaron Rodgers. By the way, the idea that we can't win without our starting quarterback, did you guys watch last week's football? When the Tampa Bay Buccaneers got beat by a quarterbackless New Orleans Saints, or how the Vikings got beat by a quarterbackless um, uh, Dallas Cowboys team, Cooper Rush, or how about the Jets with a backup quarterback destroy? Who did they beat? They they knocked the the daylights out of somebody with some no named quarterback. I forget his name. Something White. Three teams didn't have their starting quarterbacks. They went three and zero. This is still a good football team. Jordan Love was a first-round pick for a reason. Give him an opportunity to throw a couple screen passes, lean heavily on the run, bulldoze this garbage Kansas City team, and let's get the win. Let's not 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 get